Jake Ludington here at HP Discovery in Barcelona, and I'm here with Sandeep. And three par, about what six mon months ago at uh, the the previous HP Discover announced all flash arrays for the yeah. first time. Yeah. And flash continues to be a hot topic. What are you guys seeing uh, from from customers about what they what they want in an all flash array? Great, thank you, uh, Jake. First of all, uh, I want to just say thanks for having me here. Uh, you know, we uh, launched 7450, which is a three-part source of 7450 all flash uh, tier one array in June, as you mentioned. You know, from the customer side of it, what they're looking at is basically an opportunity to be able to accelerate their applications, to generate more uh, revenue generating transactions, bringing that flash acceleration for five to 10 X uh, increased levels of performance uh, in their application environments and be able to do that while maintaining uh, the, not only getting the performance acceleration and the efficiency that's needed, but being able to maintain that tier one resiliency uh, in their application environments that are you know, bringing flash acceleration to mission critical deployments, as well as retaining the flexibility to go beyond the boundaries of a single system. So they fundamentally want to be able to leverage flash to accelerate without uh, trading off or making compromises, right? So what's interesting as you ask that question is from a customer point of view, when we look at Flash, what becomes important is for customers, they're asking themselves, how do I leverage this Flash acceleration, right? And the fundamental question becomes is, depending on what their starting point is, is whether to accelerate and leverage Flash, is it a new architecture for them or is it basically a new media type? in their existing architecture. And you know, as we explored this with customers, you know, basically where their starting point dictates a new architecture, depending on what storage platform they were deploying previously, it essentially, you know, for the CIO, it means added risk of a new architecture. For that business owner or the IT manager, it means making compromises in terms of the data services or tier one resiliency. And for the IT administrator, it effectively means they're managing now a net new silo in their storage infrastructure. The other flip side of the coin is that if a customer can leverage you know, flash acceleration as a new media in their existing architecture, what that means for them is they can now accelerate without making any compromises or without having a net new silo added to their infrastructure. And that's fundamentally what the three-part sourcer platform delivers with 7450 All Flash Array is that customers are able to accelerate their applications with up to 900,000 IOPS at less than 0.7 milliseconds. They're able to, from day one, uh, get all of the tier one resiliency that is built in. And with a three-part architecture, they're able to get the efficiency level so that they are basically cost optimizing the dollar per gig of that all-flash uh, configuration, as well as with the endurance levels, they're able to extend the endurance levels in the three-part architecture so they can continue to leverage flash freely. Uh, and then last but not least, they have advanced capabilities available to them in the form of quality of service levels so that essentially they can house multiple tenants on that all-flash array and deliver predictable and uh, you know, service levels so that they can consolidate confidently on it. Uh, and they can manage the unpredictable environments and be able to grow beyond the boundaries of that single system seamlessly. So one of the unpredictabilities that used to exist in uh, flash arrays was the, the high rate of failure of drives. Have you guys uh, pretty much solved that? Because it used to be that flash was, was much more likely to fail than spinning disk. So that's interesting that you asked that, Jake. You know, certainly Flash, you know, is a uh, you know technology that's continuing to mature, and the Flash controllers are uh, continuing to mature. Uh, the three-part architecture is a massively parallel, highly virtualized architecture, where essentially we have system-wide striping, so that your data is striped across all the controllers and all of the backend devices. Uh, that same benefit, you know, in terms of you know uh, managing the uh, drive failures, whether it's hard drive failure or basically a solid state drive failure, uh, what that means is that basically the drive rebuild occurs from many to many. Uh, essentially, we have the what we call the spare chunklets on each of the SSDs. And if and when an SSD were to fail, essentially we're able to rebuild uh, in half the time and you don't incur any uh, performance IO hotspots in the three-part architecture. The other question that I think would, it would be uh, interesting to address is, um, I mean, yes, we're talking about 
flash arrays and, and flash yeah. is fast, but when a customer is asking for high performance, are they actually asking for flash or are they asking for the performance? So their fundamental need is basically, how do I get performance? They don't care whether they get it through flash or they get it through other means, but essentially they want to be able to get high levels of IOPS at lower levels of latency because essentially faster responsiveness for their, many of their applications means more revenue generating transactions. Right, and they want it with basically assured service levels and you know tier one resiliency, and that fundamentally means for some customers the right answer is to be able to where their uh, application workloads have this skewed I/O pattern, where the IOP density is such that most of the IOPs are served through a fraction of the capacity. For those environments, the right platform or you know design center is essentially basically leveraging. Uh, SSD with you know, hard disk drives with subline data tiering built in because that cost optimizes their infrastructure while delivering the service levels they demand. For others where they want basically consistent low latency uh, with you know, several hundred thousand IOPS, uh, all flash array design center is the right uh, point. But fundamentally for them what they want is this continuum of performance and cost and data services available. Is there anything else you would want people to know about 3PAR and Flash? Yeah, certainly. Um, so the 3PAR platform fundamentally from the architecture standpoint is an architecture that's highly virtualized uh, with this three-level virtualization implemented. Um, and that as an attribute along with basically uh, ASIC, which uh, you know, is inside every controller and does all of the data movement, uh, therefore, it offloads the CPU from that task so we can actually leverage the CPU for both the IOPS side but also the tier one data services uh, as well as a granular page size, uh, you know, 16K page size. Those architectural com uh, fundamental design points combined, you know, gives 3PAR an architecture that is flash optimized. Uh, we have implemented additional flash optimizations uh, in the 3PAR platform here. Uh, to enable this acceleration level at that uh, 0 0.7 millisecond latency or below. Uh, some of those optimizations that we have implemented, for example, are basically in the flash world, uh, it becomes critically important uh, to have basically this optimized cache to flash management uh, because flash fundamentally delivers far lower levels of latency. So some of the enhancements that we have done is what we call adaptive uh, reads and adaptive writes. So essentially, you know, our internal cache page size is 16K, but, you know, so in hard drive world, we would read in 16K uh, blocks uh, because in hard drives, essentially, it's better to be able to read ahead. Uh, whereas in flash side of it, what we have done is, you know, if a host is requesting 4K, 8K, even down to 512, uh, we will essentially read the exact size that the uh, host is requesting. What that does uh, is essentially it, uh, A, you know, SSDs are fast, so reads you, you're able to serve up very fast, and it preserves the internal system bandwidth for serving up the IOPS to other workloads. Uh, similarly for writes, uh, the same behavior takes place, so we're basically able to track within that 16K page what's the dirty uh, uh, page or dirty uh, size, and we're able to only flush that dirty size, therefore we're actually writing to flash very efficiently. Um, and we're, again, preserving that internal system bandwidth. Uh, some of the other enhancements that we have done, which we call the adaptive uh, cache offloads, is fundamentally, depending on the utilization of the cache, uh, if it's high utilization, we will accelerate the rate of flushing from cache to flash. Uh, so therefore, we're maintaining cache there to be able to continue to serve up high levels of IOPS at low levels of latency. Uh, we also, essentially, if there's a set of data that is hot, we'll keep that pinned in cache and basically keep serving it from there for low levels of latency uh, there. We've also added mul multiple uh, cache uh, flusher threads so that we can do mo more of the flushing on the uh, back-end flash uh, in parallel so that it's uh, flushing uh, with high levels of performance there. These are uh, you know, dynamically implemented uh, in the array. What, if you have a hard drive configuration, the cache will act differently. If you've got all flash array configuration, the cache will uh, act differently. Uh, these are all completely uh, adaptive there. Uh, the other pieces that are uh, becomes important is basically 
you know, having cash that is mirrored, uh, right protected, um, and still be able to then acknowledge to the host uh, with low levels of latency. So we basically have where when the right comes in into our cash, um, essentially the ASIC does the copy of the uh, data to the uh, ASIC and its partner node, and the CPU writes a transaction memory log. Uh, and therefore, what we do is we avoid uh, doing an interrupt to the CPU and the other controller. Therefore, that CPU and the other controller is available to continue to serve up the high IOPS there. A, um, another uh, enhancement that we implemented back in June was what we call the multi-tenant I.O. processing. So, you know, Flash with smaller page sizes works wonderfully. As the page sizes that you write to the Flash uh, increase to beyond 32K, it, you know, the levels of IOPS and the latency, IOPS tend to uh, drop down, the latency tends to increase. So what we have done essentially, if we get a large block I.O. coming in, where customers are looking to accelerate their basically decision support system or analytic type of applications that have large block sizes, uh, what we do is essentially break up that I.O. internally into 32K uh, chunks there that we write on the back end. Uh, so, therefore, you can simultaneously have 4K uh, I.O. workload and a larger block size I.O. workload, yet we will be able to optimize it internally within the array, so we're serving up high levels of performance for that mixed workload scenario. A recent uh, innovation that we have done is essentially we have implemented a software optimization that much more uh, in a load balanced fashion leverages the back-end interrupts uh, across all of the CPU cores. What that means for our 7450 all flash array uh, customers is that they're able to now get uh, up to 60% more performance with 900,000 IOPS at 0.7 milliseconds latency or below. Um, another very interesting uh, innovation that we have brought uh, in the three-part architecture is we have worked with the SSD vendors um, to uh, essentially optimize the amount of uh, f internal over-provisioning of flash that is done. So within a given SSD, every vendor you know, basically reserves a certain amount of flash to be able to have that available for you know, ride endurance management. Um, what we have worked with our um, you know, supply chain partners and essentially working with them, we've effectively lowered the amount of internal over-provisioning in that uh, SSD drive. And given the three-power architecture where we had our spares uh, spread across every single SSD, we now have what we call adaptive uh, sparing. And what that does is essentially we take our spares, uh, which were previously also present as an additional reservation. We uh, essentially hand those back to the uh, SSD, the flash controller. And those are now available to that flash controller for managing for write endurance levels as well. So the benefit of that for customers is that they're still able to get high endurance levels at lower dollar per gigabyte because more of that SSD capacity is now available to customers for writing to that flash uh, configuration. Wow, that sounds like you guys have really uh, re-architected the, the flash array from end to end. So, you know, it, I wouldn't count it as a re-architecture. It's much more of continuing to flash optimize uh, our, the existing architecture. That's the beauty of the three-part architecture is that given that we have three layers, we have essentially a media layer, we have a logical disk capacity layer, and then a volume management layer where a lot of the data services are, are implemented. You know, we're able to uh, independently optimize the media layer uh, while still preserving all of the tier one data services at that volume management layer. Similarly, we're able to optimize the caching layer uh, to dynamically uh, adopt a different personality depending on whether it's a flash configuration versus a hard drive configuration. So what that enables for customers is they're fundamentally leveraging that same architecture, so therefore they're not adding any new risk, they're preserving all of the tier one data resiliency and they're being able to leverage that flash acceleration uh, so they can go accelerate their virtualization environments, VDI environments, you know, OLTP environments or decision support systems. Wow, that's great stuff. Thanks, Sandeep. Yeah, thank you, Jay.